The next speech that you're going to hear is Brianna Lawrence. And Francis Allen Harper was, was the only one that wasn't born a slave that you, you hear from, you heard from tonight, you will hear from tonight. She was um, actually, um, became a speaker. Um, she uh, worked her way through life in, into this position by caring for people and had a uh, convention felt moved to, uh, to make this speech. And what she's talking about, what you're going to hear about, are the problems that we're about to face that now that we're moving forward as a, as a country and the things that we're going to need to do to kind of pull together. So that, that's why we kind of switched this around and made it the last one. So um, this is Brianna Lawrence. The great problem to be solved. The great problem to be solved by the American people, if I understand it, is this. Whether or not there is strength enough in democracy, virtue enough in our civilization, and power enough in our wisdom to have mercy, and deal justly with four millions of people, but lately translated from the old oligarchy of slavery to the new commonwealth of freedom. And upon the right solution of this question depends in a large measure the future strength, progress, and durability of our nation. The most important question before us colored people is not simply what the Democratic Party may do against us or the Republican Party do for us. What are, what are we going to do for ourselves? What shall we do toward developing our character, adding our quota to the civilization and strength of the country, diversifying our industry, and practicing those lordly virtues that conquer success, and turning the world's dread laugh into admiring recognition? With all the victories and triumphs which freedom and justice have won in this country, I do not believe there is another civilized nation under heaven where there are half as many people who have been brutally and shamefully murdered, with or without impunity, as in the Republic within the last 10 years. And who cares? We have a civilization which has produced grand and magnificent results, diffused knowledge, overthrown slavery, made constant conquest over nature, and built up a wonderful material property. But two things are wanting in American civilization, a keener and deeper, broader and tenderer sense of justice, a sense of humanity which shall crystallize into the life of the nation the sentiment that justice, simple justice, is the right, not simply of the strong and powerful, but of the weakest and feeblest of all God's children. A deeper and broader humanity which will teach men to look upon their feeble brethren, not as vermin to be crushed, or a beast of burden to be bridled and bitten, but as the children of the living God of that God who's made earnestly hope is in perfect wisdom and in perfect love, working for the best good for all. Some races have come in this world and overthrown and destroyed. But if it is glory to, the, to destroy, it's happiness to save. And oh, what a noble work there is before our nation. Where is there a young man who would consent to lead an aimless life when there are such glorious opportunities before him? Before our young men is another battle. Not a battle of flashing swords and clashing steels, but a moral warfare, a battle against ignorance, poverty, and a low social condition. And physical warfare, the keenest words may be blunted and the loudest batteries hushed. But in the great conflict of moral and spiritual progress, your weapons shall be brighter for their service and better for their use. In fighting truly and nobly for others, you won the victory for yourself. Give power and significance to your life, and in the great work, of upbuilding, there is room for women's work and women's heart. Oh, that our hearts were alive and our vision quickened to see the grandeur of the work that lies before. We need a deep earnestness and lofty unselfishness to round out our lives. It is the inner life that develops the outer. And if we are in earnest, the precious things lie all around our feet, and we need not waste our strength in striving after the dim and unattainable. Women, in your golden youth, mother, binding around your heart all the precious ties of life, let no magnificence of culture or amplitude of fortune or refinement of the sensibility repel you from helping the weaker and less favored. If you have ampler gifts, hold them as larger opportunities which you can benefit others. Inviting me to this work, I do not promise you fair, sailing, and cloudy sky. You may meet with coolness where you expect sympathy, disappointment where you feel sure of success, isolation and loneliness instead of hard support and cooperation. 
But if your lives are based and built upon these divine certitudes, which are the only enduring strength of humanity, then whatever deceit and discomfort may overshadow your plans or frustrate your schemes, for a life that is in harmony with God and simply for man, there is no such word as fail. Let no misfortunes crush you. No hostility or enemy or failure of friends discourage you. Apparent failure may hold in its rough shell the germs of the success that will blossom in time and bear fruit thoroughly throughout eternity. What seems to be a failure around the cross of Calvary and in the Garden of Eden has been the greatest record success of all. Thank you.